record. <laughs> Everything. <laughs> you can't escape. Everything you say may be taken in evidence by Yogi. <laughs> bleeding, bleeding cool is reporting that Joel Schumacher is revisiting the Batman franchise with a 12 issue comic book that outlines his original vision for all three films, including the one that never saw the light of day. And it's called Batman Triumphant. <laughs> <laughs> that sounds like something Adam West would do. The, the Joker would return as a hallucination in Batman's mind caused by the Scarecrow's fear toxin. <laughs> Harley Quinn appeared as a supporting character, written as the Joker's daughter, trying to get revenge on Batman for the Joker's death. Okay. Fucking <laughs> hell, Joel Schumacher, just leave it alone. <laughs> Whoa, Schumacher, I've seen his things, like I've got the quadrology on Blu-ray, and he even more or less... He doesn't really apologise, but George Clooney does. <laughs> He's just, I'm sorry, guys. <laughs> sorry, I thought it'd be the same as ER. I wasn't a doctor. <laughs> I thought all I had to do was be handsome and look at the camera. I mean, I had to actually act. Yeah, it's usually a good thing to do. Yeah. Well, if you see any man boxings, then you'll, you'll know that it's, it's a good thing to do. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, I've I've unboxed a few things. Like I'm gonna unbox the. I've done a Star Wars lightsaber unboxing. Actually, are we on pre-show, Yogi? Yeah, oh yeah, we're live. Cool. So I've done a, a Star Wars Force FX lightsaber because I finally gave in and got a Force FX, and I've done an unboxing, and it's it's cool until the wife comes home, basically, and then you can't. Run about the house in your boxes with it, <laughs> making Star Wars noises. <laughs> <laughs> I, I like the unboxing videos because a lot of times you go to these uh, online retailers, uh, even Amazon, and you're trying to figure mm. out what the hell is in the box, and they never tell you like completely what's in the box. So what's like, in the box? <laughs> <laughs> I knew it was coming. No, but it's like it's frustrating because. I want to know if you know if I get a phone. Does it come with the head headphones? Does it come with the carrying case? You know, the little extras sometimes they make the difference. That could be like the the tiebreaker between what phone you get. You know. Oh, of course. Well, I just get the Amazon Fire Phone. Talking about Amazon, I absolutely love it. I cannot get enough of it. I've all, I, I, it took two days for <laughs> me to um, do naughty things to it and make it have the Google Marketplace. Oh. And, uh, it works like a dream. It works like a dream. Yeah, because it's still running Android as the base, isn't it? Yeah. Yeah, it's running Amazon's own version of Android as the Fire Phone, Fire OS, or whatever it's called. But you, you can make it run Google, even though it says it can't. It's like, you know you can, baby. <laughs> I'd like to get a, a Kindle, because... Uh... Yeah, I've, do, I've got one. HDX. Nice. Yeah, because all, all the audiobooks and... Mm. The cool stuff you get on there that you can't like. Uh, they have the Kindle uh, lending program. You can only get it if you have a Kindle device. I love that the the lending library and the, um, they've actually got a program where you pay like I think some like five five pounds. I don't know if that's like three, four, five dollars, and you get books every month. There's certain books every month you can borrow just for free. It's absolutely amazing. I love it for reading comics though. That's really cool. It's included on uh, Amazon Prime, isn't it? Yeah. See, it's yeah. like I have Amazon Prime, and it's the one benefit I can't take advantage of. Well, that's the that's the thing that um, I had a Kindle. I I got one. I was going on holiday to Spain in the summer, and I ordered one. And uh, unfortunately, I didn't have Prime at the time. I decided to sign up for Prime while I was in Spain, and it arrived like two days into my holiday, apparently. <laughs> so I got it when I came back, and uh, when I got my Fire Phone a few weeks ago. It comes with a year's Amazon Prime free, which includes your video. Nice. They got a lot of stuff on there too. Mm. And it's got it's got a dynamic perspective where you've got the five cameras. It tracks your face. You can set this phone down, and when you move, it tracks your face, and the apps move. It's awesome. I can't get enough. <laughs> <laughs> and I, I had the iPhone five before this, so that that doesn't say much for how good it is, but. <laughs> I love the Amazon. I love the iPhone five for the security and the apps instantly and the apps day one. But I mean, it's such a breath of fresh air having the Amazon Fire Phone and access to the Google. So yes, guys, if you want to buy 
Amazon Fire Phone or anything from Amazon.com. Use the uh, referral link, Amazon.com forward slash Ali Kennedy. No, no, you can actually get a referral <laughs> link from Amazon if you go to 42level1.com. Oh, you do really, you do really have one. There you go. <laughs> we really have one, yeah. <laughs> so use 42level1.com for that. But, yeah, Amazon. I do really like Amazon. I yeah, do. I do too. I use them too much sometimes. But, Ross, how are you yeah. feeling? I'm good. I'm good, man. Yeah, good stuff. What have you been purchasing recently, comic wise? Fuck all, man. Like, I've not fucking bothered. I'm trying to wrap my head around DC. <laughs> like, I used to, I thought I was on top of DC three, four months ago, and they're just arseholes by fucking up everything again. <laughs> uh, so I'm, I'm trying to wrap my head around uh, the Forever Evil storyline just now, and I'm basically trying to delve into the side stories like uh, Ark, um, Arkham War and stuff like that. Um, and yeah, that's pretty much what I've been doing. And plus, I've been working on my own comic book as well for quite a wee bit. We're sort of making some headway into that for a January release. So, um, so yeah. Um, but yeah, basically, mostly the uh, the fucking DC stuff, man. Just oh my god, it's just too much. <laughs> it's ridiculous. Talk about your comic book, man. You still doing the same one you were talking about? Yeah, man. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's uh, it's getting there. Yeah, it's called Odyssey, and it's um, a post-apocalyptic. Uh, espionage thriller with uh, hints of Judge Dredd and Greek mythology and uh, we've been working on it for years and uh, it was a bit of a sort of um, short sightedness on my part, I didn't realise how long artists need to actually like you know, create concept art and stuff so we've had to push back the release date by years by years but um, hopefully we're kind of getting something decent um, decent to do, uh, well hopefully we get the first issue done by January and uh, shop it around for a wee bit. So we've already got a couple of interested publishers, so it'll be interesting to see how that works out. But um, but yeah, it should be fun. It should be a good laugh. Uh, what about yourself, Yoga? Are you into comic books at all, or do you do anything at all, or what? Me? Yeah. I am. I am. Oh, nice one, man. Cool. I just, you... Uh, you know, that's another thing that I, I'm so behind on. I just try to catch it here and there. Like, uh, I'm, I'm, I think I'm going to get back into the Walking Dead comics. But like, uh, Mar like I'm a Marvel guy, but I also like DC. Yeah, and there's, there's like, like there's, so there's, much there's stuff. There's like just just so much to sort of take in. Like for example, like Walking Dead, the last one I I read was like volume five, and now there's like up to like you know thirteen, fourteen, or even longer than that, and it's just a bit like fucking hell. Like so much to catch up. There is, is there even any time to? <laughs> yeah, I think they're up to like uh, issue one forty five or something crazy like that. It's like oh gosh. <laughs> yeah, I don't even so know much. where to start. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but yeah, it's just oh, it's absolutely. Mental. So, uh, what did you guys think of the Marvel uh, Avengers two trailer? Like, it was quite. I actually have not seen it yet. I I, I don't want to tease myself. I don't want to <laughs> tease myself because uh, I'm already looking forward to you know Age of Ultron, and I'm hoping to make another Guardians of the Galaxy soon, <laughs> soonish. <laughs> Cause I really love that movie. <laughs> yeah, like a... like next month. <laughs> <laughs> you never know; they might already be in production at the rate they're going at. You know. <laughs> I thought I, mean, I, I thought I, Guardians I, was better than than Cap Two, personally. A hundred percent. Guardians is better than a lot of Marvel films, mainly for Chris Pratt, who is a legend. If you've ever <laughs> if if you've ever watched Guardians, you've not seen Parks and Recreation. I suggest you watch it. That guy get moved from co-star to full time within. A few episodes. Well, it was a whole season actually. Season two, he's he's hilarious. And if you if you like Chris Pratt and his humor, if you go to YouTube and you look up Chris Pratt Kim Kardashian, you'll see one of the outtakes. And I, I've laughed at that so many times, I cannot believe it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Oh man, good times. Oh. Okay. There we go. I'm uh, adjusting the volume level. So yeah, you know, probably we're already like 10 minutes in with the pre-show. We haven't even introduced ourselves at all. <laughs> I mean, not like I'm going to upload it to YouTube, but just in case anyone's <laughs> listening out there. If anyone is listening, I am um, Princess Banana Hammock. No, I'm not sure. <laughs> Banana Hammock. Al yeah, Banana Hammock. <laughs> I'm uh, Alistair Kennedy. And uh, you can hear me in such shows as 42 Level 1. Starling City Radio, and um, for the first time 
on uh, Timey Wimey Tea Time Podcast tomorrow night. I'm going to be on, even though I was meant to be on before. Apologies to the listeners and Yogi himself and all the geeky antics out there. Um, but yeah, I'm Alistair Kennedy. You can get me at the Almeister, Gad About Gamer on Twitter. And uh, I'll pass over to the hostess with the most S, Rostifer. Yes, I am uh, Ross Shaw. Um, you can usually find me on Starland City Radio uh, hosting, as Ali would be the co-host. So, you know, it's all good <laughs> there. <laughs> no, no, co- co-host for me on, on Starland City Radio. Uh, sometimes you can get me on 42 Level 1. I'm kind of like a rare Pokemon that pop, pops up every so often. And <laughs> Ross is if they, have, <laughs> if, they, if they have the Master Ball or, or they can work out the glitch, then they can they can summon me into, <laughs> into, the, uh, into the lineup. Uh, and also... Uh, tonight obviously with uh, the Rebels podcast um, you can get me on Twitter as well at Roscoe NYG so yeah it's quite it's quite exciting to be with uh, to be with you two guys tonight it's quite good good times you're excited to be with me man of course I'm a, always I, excited you know I, I had a whole show with you about an hour ago <laughs> yeah. don't lie to the listeners there's no diversion anymore you know <laughs> smoking mirrors, smoking mirrors. Man. Yeah. Well, wait, Ross. Yeah. Are you are you more of a rare Pokemon or a shiny? He's more of a raw Pokemon. <laughs> oh yeah. <laughs> no, uh, I'd, I'd I'd like to say shiny because it brings back uh, good <laughs> good um good good memories from being younger when you'd have to chase the shinies with the Pokemon cards and everything that man. I mean, Not I remember. Shinies. The only Always. shit I chased was Andy Gorham and Alan McCoist. <laughs> yes, the uh, oh, the the <laughs> wonderful football fo- uh, football stickers. But yes, no, no, I'd I'd say I'd say shiny, yeah, a shiny Blastoise that went for quite a lot of money, shiny I reckon. <laughs> <laughs> Should have just went for one five one new. <laughs> oh my gosh! <laughs> and obviously, obviously, introducing us is uh, the man himself, Yogi. Hello. I think everybody that, that watches our channel is probably tired of me already. <laughs> hey, man, if I've got to introduce myself, so do you. Do an introduction to yourself. And what sort of Pokemon are you? Oh, that's a, that's a, that's a loaded question. I'm going to say, I'm going to answer that first. I'll probably say I'm Jirachi. Because, like, <laughs> I don't know, I think Jirachi is, like, pretty bad. As like, He looks all cute and innocent, but, like... He could, he could freaking grant wishes. I mean, he could do whatever he wants. <laughs> I bet you when you catch Jirachi, like, off air, you know, off the camera, he's like, whatever, whatever, I do what I want. <laughs> he just slaps up other Pokemon, like, what up, bitch? <laughs> <laughs> See, I, I'd, I'd, be, I'd, I'd, I'd be Bulbasaur. I really would. <laughs> Bulbasaur's pretty I, badass too. <laughs> he's he's just a little crabbit little thing that would I can imagine Ash every time he pisses him off, like he just bites his ankles and Ash falls over. <laughs> uh, bow, bow. <laughs> Fuck you, Ash. <laughs> well, he's got the the that whip the whip vine yeah. thing that he does, right? Yeah, that's kind of brutal, man. He's into the S and M. Yeah, that's how I keep 42 going. You know, every time Andy and Fraser step out of line, it's like... It's like... Bah, bah. Some, <laughs> some sort of like 50 Shades of Bulbasaur or something. 50 like. Shades of Bulbasaur. <laughs> <laughs> Crazy ass vine, whip, uh, vine whips. In the <laughs> 50 Shades of Vine Whip. <laughs> <laughs> we're, we're, we're steering down a dark path here. <laughs> God, indeed. And we don't want to get into dark Pokemon, because that's a bad avenue. I mean, I've met Gengar and Hunter. They're not cool cats. <laughs> <laughs> so no, that, the, the uh, cats would be uh, Eevee, right? No. Oh, those are Fox. Uh, meow. Meow. <laughs> oh, that's Meow. Rocket, right? <laughs> There's only one cat one cat Pokemon that I can think of. Meow. Well, Meowth and then the Evolve form. Bigger Meowth. <laughs> but that's it, right? Yeah, um, cat Pokemon. No, there's got there's another one. Uh, I've just got Pokemon Y as well. I can't remember that. See, after the first 150, I, I gave up. I mean, yeah, I was, it was about it was 12 years ago. I played them on the Game Boy Color or the Game Boy, probably Game Boy One, and uh, uh, like after Mew came out. I didn't really play gold or silver. I was like, I've got enough creatures. And then they brought out things I was discussing in 42. It was like, that's just a trash bag with boxing gloves. <laughs> that, that, 
that one's a stick. That's an ice cream cone. The testicles, the testicles. Those are the best. An ice cream cone with testicles, yeah. And it's like, the last one I seen, I was talking to Andy, and it was a set of uh, house keys with a face. That's, that somebody's lost their interest at the Game Freak Studios, and they've just went, what's around me? <laughs> I, I, I guarantee you two years time you have like Pokemon and it's like beer bottle is your first one and bottle cap is it's like small form you know like bottle cap full beer bottle empty beer bottle and then just a drunk tramp <laughs> so I've, I've just done some quick uh, google search in there and I think Meowth's evolved form is Persian it and, is then, and then there's Zangoose which is a cat fed at Pokemon there's okay. Glammeow which is another cat one, and Perugly, which is another tiger cat Pokemon. So there you go. Today I learned that there's more <laughs> than one cat Pokemon. <laughs> Would you like to know more? <laughs> <laughs> Subscribe to Pokemon Cats. <laughs> B- BFT, we got our first chat response. BFT in the chat says, there's also a sword Pokemon. He's literally a sword with, with eyes. <laughs> it's like the greatest Pokemon ever. <laughs> you know, it's like see the guy that that's like the, the, I'll give the first 150 that you they look okay, but then see after that, it's like okay, what's this one? Mm, it's a uh, it's a leaf. What? No, no, see? it's a leaf, but you don't understand. It's got. <laughs> you can imagine that pitch to their boss. <laughs> you know what Pokemon have you got from today? And they throw down the flip chart and it's like what's this one <sighs> well it's a candle okay <laughs> and it's evolved form as lit candle <laughs> the sword pokemon isn't isn't the sword pokemon a rip off from the the cartoon swords and who framed roger rabbit because didn't, didn't the cartoon there wasn't the cartoon swords in there that, that were like didn't want to uh didn't want to be used to the sort of flopped around a bit like um yes. you know but yeah uh, yeah i'm floppy. pretty sure yeah it's i'm pretty sure they've, they've ripped that from <laughs> roger rabbit yeah roger rabbit you get right on that like the flop toys from roger rabbit are now pokemon <laughs> <laughs> so, oh man should we start the show yeah let's, let's, let's start it you got you got some intro music uh, I was just I was just gonna literally rip off the Star Wars theme, but anything will do. And a one, two, three, four. <laughs> Are we gonna sing it? I was gonna make this. Are, Are you it. sure anything will do? Anything, any any dream will do, as Jason Donovan said in this country. Let me let me. I might sound weird briefly. I'm 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 fiddling with stuff. If you've got some rocky, ravey, Star Warsy dance music, we'll do just for tonight. But I'm gonna upload this with the official Star Wars theme song. Some Come at, Come yeah, this is me. for the this is for the live people. They get the the sexy t- the sexy time. Yeah. <laughs> so with some t- 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 do for do it for you. Okay, this is late night love with Yogi Zilla. <laughs> <laughs> There you go. I'm, 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 I'm going to open this up. You ready? You guys ready? Yeah. I'm born ready. Go for it. Here we go. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen, Padawans, Jedi Knights, and Jedi Masters. Welcome to the premiere episode of Rebelcast UK. And, of course, I am not your only host tonight. We have many other hosts. Please introduce yourself, my host, on the left. 
My uh, my name is Ross Shaw. How are you getting on, guys, tonight? All good, yeah. I was raving away at that music. It was awesome. It was almost like on death sticks kicking about, you know, <laughs> going absolutely crazy in Coruscant nightclub in the <laughs> underground CD world. Yeah. Uh, it was just quite cool, you know, not bad. You know, on sort of like pre-episode four style thing, you know, just going at it wild. <laughs> what about some death sticks? <laughs> but Obi Wan wasn't there to stop me, but hey, oh, there Obi Wan isn't. But yes, I'm uh, I'm Ross Shaw. Nice to nice to meet everybody, and uh, nice to be on the show tonight. So. Okay, and my other host, as always, I am Yomar. But everybody calls me Yogi, aka Yogi Zilla. How's it going, guys? Yeah. So tonight we're going to talk to you a bit about Star Wars Rebels, but before we dive into the depths of the newest of new Star Wars. I've got questions for the hosts, because we like to introduce ourselves to everyone. Um, I'll start off myself. What I'm going to ask you is, your favourite original movie, your favourite prequel movie, and your favourite all-time Star Wars character, be it canon or new canon, or say what you like. So anyway, favourite original movie for myself, Empire, has to be. Um, we can discuss these afterwards. Uh, favourite prequel movie, Sith, has to be. And my favourite all-time character is... The man, the legend, Obi Wan Kenobi. So over to you, Ross. What about yourself? I'd have to go for um, for the original trilogy. Definitely, Empire Strikes Back. Quite it resonates personally with me. Um, for the uh, prequels, I'm going to go for Episode Two, Attack of the Clones. I actually, I actually enjoyed that one uh, better than the three. And for my <laughs> character, I'm going. I'm delving into the extended universe, which is now deemed defunct by Disney. So hopefully, this character survives, but uh, only time will tell. But uh, my favorite character of all time is Kyle Katarn from the um, Dark Forces and uh, Jedi Knight games. Awesome choices. And Yogi, what about yourself? Original, prequel, and favorite character, man. Man, you guys did not give me a heads up on this, so I'm going in blind. <laughs> I'd have to go with Empire Strikes Back. Um, favorite character, I, I, you know, I've always been uh, kind of smitten, kind of man crush status with uh, Harrison Ford, so I have to go with Han Solo. Um, as far as the the prequel, the newer movies, um, yeah, I think I'd go with Attack of the Clones just because it addressed a big void in the storytelling for me, and then every, suddenly everything clicked. So that's how they switched, started to switch places. Yeah, I I enjoyed it just for the sort of action pieces and yeah. you know it felt rather than just focused on a ragtag group of people, it sort of brought in the broader universe. You know, you saw like the council, you saw all the other pieces finally in play, and it, and as you said, you finally clicked as to how we got to the stage that we were in episodes four, five, and six. Yep, and it, and it's such a, like you said, uh, it's a, it's like a grand scale of of the conflict, so. Is that you know? Yeah. I, I love those kind of epic stories. Though I do like you know a good space space opera with you know ragtag group of, of people like Firefly, Tear Tear. Yeah. yeah. Mm. Sorry, I, I had a little moment, sad moment there. Oh. Firefly. Take a moment for Firefly. <laughs> yeah. I know. Pour a drink out. <laughs> if I, yeah, if I had a little, if I had a beer, I'd pour some out for my homies. Yeah. <laughs> See, in Scotland, we wouldn't waste the beer. We would drink one for the homies. Pour <laughs> it back into our mouths, you know. Yeah. <laughs> One for the brown coats. <laughs> well, I didn't. I didn't. I didn't say where I was gonna pour it. Obviously, into my mug. <laughs> good save. Good save. <laughs> thank you. Thank you. So anyway, now that you know a wee bit about us, we've got to dive into Star Wars Rebels. Now, this was the first uh, created under the Disney banner, apart from if you count episode season six of Clone Wars. Um, this is set five years before A New Hope when Luke moaned about getting power couplings and 14 years after, I want to say when Darth Vader lost his legs but <laughs> I have to say <laughs> episode 3 Revenge of the Sith. Um, this series is set up um, to discuss how the Rebel lines came about which is, is, is kind of kind of gets me because of Disney's canon and uh, I really love the Force Unleashed games, and I love that. And I, there's, although they have the set cannons now, there is the if Disney use it, it's okay. So fingers crossed for Gallum Maric appearing, but I can't see it happening. So this is basically about a, a ragtag group of rebels, as Yogi just described. Um, they are they've all been affected by the evil empire in one form or another, and uh, basically. 
uh, they, they fly about and it reminds me more of what Han Solo would do with a crew rather than anyone um, else in Star Wars I can think of. And before we all get into our opinions, I'm going to run you through the characters. Um, you've got Kanan Jarrus, who is played by Freddie Prince Jr., surprisingly, really well. You've got uh, Ezra Bridger, who's Taylor Gray, is the voice actor. You've got Zeb, he's actually Gareth Zeb Aurelius, which is played by Stephen Bloom. Um, you've got Sabine, or Sabine Wren is the second name, played by Tia Sarkar. You've got Hera, which is known as or Hera Syndulla. It's Vanessa Marshall. And you've got C110P Chopper, which is not played by anyone. As for the Galactic Empire so far, we have the Inquisitor, who's badass, played by Jason Isaacs. We have Agent Callus, played by David Oyelo, is how I can say it. <laughs> and of course, returning for a special scene in the upcoming broadcast, which is tomorrow, I believe, as we're recording this, uh, James Earl Jones is coming back as Darth Vader. Um, there's other surprising characters. Uh, there's actually a Star Trek crossover in this. Um, there's also a Futurama crossover. Um, however... Uh, I will comment on one point before we discuss this. I did think Obi-Wan Kenobi's voice in the Holocron in episode one sounded strange, but it's the same person that played him in Clone Wars, James Arnold Taylor. And I'm really happy with the voice cast so far. What do you guys think about the voice cast? We'll start on that. Yeah, it's good. It's um, it's an interesting mix of, um, of voices. And it's, yeah, I mean, like, it's... It's because it's such a new show, and we're so used to the Clone Wars, and we're kind of like, if, I don't know if about uh, Yogi, but like, you know, Ali and I have obviously watched like all six seasons of the Clone Wars, so we kind of get used to like the, the the types of voices that we're supposed to hear. But this is completely new, and it feels lighter and a bit sort of fluffier, and it's 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 good though. Like, um, it's it's a nice varied amount of voices. I think Freddie Prince Jr. is is definitely uh, fitting the right part of that sort of like, yeah. you know, that. He's he should be mature, but he still is is like in, rather than being young, is inexperienced but still mature, and I think he fits that kind of voice to it as well. Uh, Zeb's voice is brilliant. I love absolutely love how Zeb is sort of played out. Um, interesting note in Zeb that was the original drawing for Chewbacca um, yeah. before it went through the pre-production of uh, New Hope. Um, uh, Sabine's voice, I could listen to that all day. Like, I honestly, whoever <laughs> the, the, the woman is voicing Sabine, my God, that's an awesome voice. Um, but yeah, it's, it's a great amalgamation of voices, and it's it's an interesting sort of uh, way to go. And, and Chopper, Chopper's, like, uh, characteristics are just, like, magnified <laughs> with his, uh, or amplified with his sort of, like, uh, that sort of droning voice. And it's a nice change from hearing the sort of the whistles and the beeps for, that we were so used to with R2-D2 and, and hearing another astromech have its own personality via its own sort of drones and sort of, like, yeah, it's 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 difficult to sort of explain verbally, but you, you'll under, when, when you've watched the programs, I'm pretty sure you'll understand exactly what I'm talking about in the sense, like, Chopper's personality is just, like, yeah, enhanced by his um, his interesting uh, sort of, like, beeps and whistles as well, I suppose. Yeah. So, Yogi, what what is your opinions on the voices in this man? I will second all of what Ross said. <laughs> <laughs> well, uh, especially especially the very pleasant voice to listen to for sure, and uh, I was already feeling like, hmm, they got a little something here for the adults. Uh huh. <laughs> <laughs> oh, <Yeah>. come on. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just uh, saying. Yeah, just, it's, it's, it, I, I'm totally in agreement with Yogi here. Like, it totally is. It's just like, yep, yeah, that's. That voice is specifically picked. <laughs> yeah, I mean, come on. Even Ezra calls out to it. Is, is it does he kind of like hit on her a little bit? Mm -hmm. Yeah, so... he does. Yeah. <laughs> he does. The kids, like, uh... the kids will be oblivious to it, but he's like, "Hey, baby." <laughs> <laughs> what you say to it when you're graffiti down, my baby? I'm a Jedi. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I like that sort of like um, infatuation. Infatuation Ezra has over Sabine, and I think it pretty much. Um, it's so weird because it's a cartoon, but it's like yeah, the 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 voice definitely helps um, 
didn't sort of portray that infatuation. I think we can all agree that uh, <laughs> Cerny said if we close our eyes, we'll be like, yep, totally understand she, where she's, she's coming she's, from. <laughs> she's te- typical teenage crush slash married man infatuation. <laughs> 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 so after, uh, the voice acting is all well and good, but obviously the graphical style we've got to touch on before we hit the storyline and the main basis. So graphically, like this is this is only my opinion, Ross and Yogi, you might have different, but I watched the Clone Wars, I watched the Clone Wars series, it was before it as well, it was kind of anime based. I prefer this style to the Clone Wars, which was almost like cartoonized or animate the characters and stretch them. They looked almost odd, whereas in this one they looked, (laughs) I'll get into the sort of Disney aspect later, but they kind of looked Disney but almost perfectly fit in the Star Wars universe as normal humans, whereas in the, the Clone Wars it was almost as if they'd been put through a Wrangler yeah. and stretched, <laughs> you know? Yeah. Uh, what do you think, Yogi? Do you, do you like this animation? Yeah, I definitely like it much better. I mean, I, I love Clone Wars, but initially getting into it, and I just keep around a, a bit, but uh, I own a couple of the seasons on DVD, so I have that to, on my side, but um, initially getting into Clone Wars, it was a little rough because the I would, I, I like the the animated style of it, but it didn't feel right for Star Wars. So it it, it was in a it was a hard pill to swallow, just to put it like that. Uh, for this, it was just I jumped right into it, and I mean honestly, if you hadn't even brought it up, my touch, I, I may have missed it and jumped into it well after the fact. So I'm I'm glad you uh, made me aware of this series because I'm I'm already loving it. And the, the art style is just it fits like it, it feels like it belongs in a universe. You know, it's it, it fits the style and it, it fits the story. Yeah, yeah. it's. I, totally in agreement like the spit the set pieces are just perfect like it's exactly how star wars should be um i'm i'm digging it i'm, I'm digging the animation as well i'm, I'm digging the, the cat how the character thing i'll say one thing uh they better redesign how wookies look in this uh, <laughs> uh this show. i mean oh my I god like i was just like affronted i was like wait no this is a joke come on really is this a, a, like what the hell but yeah they really need to sort that out but apart from yeah. like how badly they handle the wookies uh, i mean that's i mean fair news <laughs> is a kind of major point because it could be a major species that they, they look at uh during the the episode but no i'm quite i, I can it certainly has that Disney animation feel to it, yet mm-hmm. it's not too overpowered. It it's still sort of kept within the universe, and I can totally. Now that I've watched Star Wars Rebels, and then when I've rewatched Clone Wars, I can totally see where you guys are coming from with how that animation style in Clone Wars didn't quite fit no. the Star Wars universe. It was still good, brilliant, yeah. flawless animation, but it just didn't quite fit it. Whereas now we seem to get into this idea where it does seem to sort of have a place in the universe, this animation. Yeah, no, I, I really do love it, and I know exactly what you mean about the wikis, that's my only fault in this series as a whole, but as, as you guys may have known or may not have known, we're up to episode four if you've got Disney XD in America, which is not available, sadly, in Britain, so we are slightly behind. But um, episodes one to three is what we're going to be discussing tonight, a storyline. Uh, character development and just in general Star Wars how can you get better than that so you guys have obviously watched Clone Wars um, I'm the one of the biggest Star Wars fans I've loved it since I was a child it's one of the only things I've hung on to since I was a child I say that I'm a gamer I like comics actually I've never grew up so um, Star Wars is <laughs> Star Wars is awesome and um, Clone Wars came along and of course, like everyone, I dived into it. Now, I've only watched three episodes of um, Rebel so far, but in comparison to Clone Wars, up to season three when Darth Maul appeared, I was kind of let down by the Clone Wars series. It kind of felt more like you remember the Senate scene, guys, in a Phantom Menace, and every kid was sitting going, <gasps> "What's this, Mom?" You know, and it's. No one liked that part, and it obviously got wiped out in uh, episode two with your guys, because you're obviously Twilight fans with the love scene, and uh, then you get <laughs> oh. then you get the bad then you get the badass episode three where Obi Wan finally smacks Anis, Anakin's ass down. Um, Clone Wars kind of was it was more of a I'm gonna be honest a lull for me for at least the first two seasons coming up to the end as well. It was it was almost dragging out a story that. 
needed to be told that they didn't have a storyline for it. And this is no offence to Star Wars, Disney, Lucas or anyone, but a personal opinion, Rebels has excited me for the reason that it's fresh, it's new, we don't know these characters, they're in a time period that hasn't really been discussed, give or take the Force Unleashed game. It's it's just brand new to me. So what do you guys think? What what Compared to Clone Wars, before we get into the nitty gritty. I think it's difficult to sort of compare, I think, these two shows with each other because they're like two different beasts totally, you know, like... You know, Clone Wars certainly did start out a bit like how Rebels has started out with very tailored towards uh, kids, you know, and then as the seasons developed, you know, things got darker, things got more serious, more sort of attention was being paid to a lot of like multi episode arcs. Um, now, obviously, Rebels has this sort of like, hey, feel good idea to it, you know, like, and I think again, I think it's because we're, I think this is like, you know, like, you know, Clone Wars was going on for six seasons and we're so used to it to the point where we're just watching it. Not not watching it for the sake of watching it in a bad way, but we're just watching it. And then, but now, because this is brand new, I think we're all, like, struck with this sort of, you know, fresh paint feeling, you know, brand new set designs, brand new set pieces. Ali says that it's, it's a time period that we're not very familiar with. However, the time period is closer to what we're familiar with in Clone Wars Wars. You know, for example, like the corridors and uh, the stormtroopers and all that, I think because they're so similar to what's seen in four episodes four, five, and six, uh, we're kind of forgiven in terms of like how the story sort of pans out in the sense that, you know, like we're going, oh yeah, they're stormtroopers. I know exactly, like, you, we can like relate to everything that's there because we're like, oh, I know those corridors, I know those, those detention blocks, you know, I know these stormtroopers. Whereas in Clone Wars, I think it's because it was so more unknown than what this time period that Rebels Well, the way, I, the way I was meaning it, Ross, was more like you, you were overly familiar with Anakin and Obi-Wan. And this time, you do not know what's going to happen with the characters, whereas Anakin and Obi-Wan, you, you, you've you known your, their fates for years. Yeah, that's, yeah, I mean... That's my main point. Yeah, I, yeah, oh, definitely, yeah. It, it's like, yeah, I see where you're coming from now, and it's nice to sort of, like, see what the, um, you know, like, these, so far, anyway... The, the outer uh, rim world living people. <laughs> the, the crew of Go- oh, the crew of the ship Ghost... Um, Definitely, uh, you know, it, it feels like, you know, these are like average Joes and it's, it, it, you know, it's nice to see how these average Joes fit in with the universe, uh, you know, within the Star Wars thing, you know, we, we're not dealing with, you know, uh, the chosen one, we're not dealing with the Jedi Council or anything because it's all gone, we're not even dealing with Darth Vader, so to speak, you know, uh, in this thing, so it's just literally, as you said, people in the outer rim, and uh, I just sort of like to give people a bit of a background as to what I'm about to say, um, you know, I, I GM a lot at the on the Star Wars Edge of the Empire role playing game. You know, and you know, dealing with a sort of Dungeons and Dragons style type thing. And you know, yes, you know, have yeah, yes. <laughs> damn excited, sorry, brilliant. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, so, and I'm pretty sure the on time we're coming from, like, I feel like Star Wars Rebels is almost like a Edge of the Empire adventure, like taken straight out. Like every mm. single character we've met so far feels like. A character that that my friends would have created in an adventure, you know, like you've got like your sort of your your Wookiee style in in Zeb, you know, you've got the guy that wants to be the Jedi but also wants to be the smuggler in terms of like Kanan, you know, and then you've also got like the pilot mechanic in terms of uh, Hera, you know, and you've got all these other different bits and pieces, and it it really does feel like an Edge of the Empire adventure playing out in front of our eyes, and uh, it's set obviously in the same kind of time period as well, and. I, I really like that idea, you know, whereas Clone Wars, as Ali said, you know, you're following the Jedi Council, Anakin, the Chosen One, Obi-Wan Kenobi, we're now sort of now seeing these sort of random ragtag groups kicking about, so uh, so yeah, I mean, I, I hope that makes more sense, and especially for the listeners, if you guys have ever had a chance to sort of um, play or get to know what Edge of the Empire is, hopefully that makes a wee bit more sense in terms of the fact that it does play out like a the adventure that that you would create as a as a player or, or as a GM, and then anything else. That's that's my sort of piece in the my two cents in the matter. So there we go. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know the, the thing that I that I like about it is one of my biggest problems with the the new movies, the prequels, is that you know it, it didn't do a good job of bridging the gap between the original movies. And those, and it felt, I don't know, it felt almost like it wasn't part of the same universe because, and I know I know there's reasons for this and people will always argue about it, but it still 
bothers me that everything's super shiny in the new movies. And I know because special effects have come a long way. But they could have kind of made it look yeah. like it fit into the universe. But everything's super shiny in in the prequel movies. And then in the original movies, it's like everything's destitute, rusty, and, and crappy. Like, you know, the world's been at in the universe been at war forever. So, you know, I, I feel like with uh, the Star Wars Rebels show... They could show how things finally kind of went down, you know, into that downward spiral and, 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 and got to that point. Because obviously, you know, wars break out, the rebels start fighting, and then whole cities and towns and planets get destroyed or ravaged. And that's why we see all that, all these craptastic places, you know, yeah. it's like, man, there's like these little shanty towns, you know, in the, in the futuristic world, you know what I mean? Yeah. Yeah, it's, it's 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 certainly a nice bridge between the the shiny sort of feel good uh, atmosphere that the, yeah. the the original the not the original the uh, prequels, prequels. had uh, come to that, as you said like the sort of the the destitute original trilogy. It's nice to sort of see almost a bridge where like it, you know you still have that sort of feel good atmosphere, but you're as you said you're starting to slowly see like the shanty towns. You're starting to see these fringers uh, of the crew, the ghosts that are having to use you know, random parts in order to repair the ships and stuff. And it is, yeah, I think they certainly have dealt with that sort of, I suppose, like, problem, as you could probably put it, um, uh, quite successfully in the sense that we are slowly seeing that transition uh, happen. Good. Yeah, I, I really do like it, but this is always the problem with uh, creating movies. and Like, that was always George Lucas's plan. In fact, it was a nine-movie plan he had originally, and it was a story of uh, Darth Vader. It wasn't Luke Skywalker, which it became... And um, the the problem is, like I was saying, having better looking weapons and more colourful things than the original movies makes the original movies look older, which is crazy. But see if you view the original movies and the prequels, the original movies have a darker tone to it. Yeah. Completely, give give or take the last few half hours of Seth when um, uh, Lieutenant Dan is crawling up, you know. <laughs> yep. And uh, <laughs> you, it's, it's really good. Um, th this has got a good contrast between the two, and contrast is a favourite word of Storm City Radio, but, <laughs> <laughs> you know, it's, it's got a good contrast between the two. It links them better than Clone Wars did. I, I will say that 100%. Yeah, definitely. Uh, I, I, I mean, like, the, obviously, it's understandable why. You know, um, the, the the sort of later the original trilogy is darker, whereas the, the the prequels were sort of lighter to sort of show how bad the empire has affected uh, the galaxy. Um, but yeah, I think we're all quite pretty much in agreement with the fact that you know, um, uh, Rebels so far have done a really tidy job to sort of show both sides of the story, yet still progress towards that darker uh, yeah. sort of look at it. So, yeah. With with not one no from Darth Vader yet. But <laughs> bef bef before we move on to the episode thing, I've got to ask you guys. I really do need to know. So far, I know it's only been three episodes. Who's who's your favorite, Yogi? Who's your favorite so far? Oh, you know, right off the top of my head, I would go with uh, Chopper, just because <laughs> I was always a big R two D two fan, and I love how he was so sassy with his limited vocabulary of beeps and, and whistles. <laughs> but, yeah, exactly. He's like, hey, don't give me sass, mister. <laughs> <laughs> but Chopper's, like, got the same kind of thing going him. And I like the way he just says poking and prodding people. <laughs> yeah. So, he's like an that's... extreme R2-D2. Yeah, he's like freaking emo R2-D2. Like, I don't know. <laughs> he's got some uppers or something. I mean, that's right off the top of my head. I, I haven't had a chance to really... I have to rewatch the episodes to really have them grown out to me, but he that stood out for me because so, and that's what I love about the show is that the fact the fact that they're building a new world, we're seeing some fringe planets, they're expanding the universe, but at the same time they have the familiar faces like Three CPO was there and uh, yeah. Rx D two was there, and that got me excited. I was like, yay, nerdgasm! Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. See, see, for me, I, this is just for me. It's Tia. See the fact that she pranced on, I say pranced, she came on the screen and she had Mandalorian armor that was graffiti. I want to know more about Tia. I need to know more about it's Tia. It's Sabine, it's not Tia. Oh, that's her voice artist, it's Sabine. <laughs> 
See, well, maybe Tia. I'll, I'll need to look up her up later. But uh, Sabine. I wonder. Yeah, Sabine's, I wonder. Is she a looker? Let's see. Ah, uh, uh, let's just see. <laughs> I'll, I'll do this Google. research. <laughs> <laughs> oh, she's not bad. Yeah, she is. Yeah. So Tia. Yeah, she most interests me. But no. <laughs> shout, um, shout out to Tia out in Fort Worth, Texas. What's up? Whoa, whoa. What? She's in the Vampire Diaries. <laughs> yeah. She's nice. But anyway, her, her, her character is called Sabine, and Sabine is a uh, Mandalorian. Uh, well, I presume she's Mandalorian because she's Mandalorian armor with graffiti art down it. And that just, for me as a big Boba Fett, Jango Fett fan, it, yeah. and Man Mandalorian fan, it just it, it blew my mind with it. How did she get that armor? Is she Mandalorian? And the spray paint, it's just something different. It's very different. That's who is my favorite right now. Even though we've not seen much screen time for her in the first three episodes. Ross, what about you? Who's your favorite? <laughs> I also had Chopper written down, but to keep <laughs> things fresh, yeah. my second sort of favorite character is um, is a uh, 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 Kanan or, or Canon or I can't remember. Canon. Is it a Canon? Can how, uh, like a boom. I like, uh, I want to know more about his backstory, you know, like, well, for example... you can do, we... and we'll cover it in the, the following episodes if you get the book A New Dawn, which I believe you just recently got. Um, yes, I have, yeah, I've, I'm planning to read that on my holidays. It, 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 a, new, a New Dawn is the first official canon novel from the Disney Star Wars canon, and it covers a uh, canon... And it also covers Hera's background and how they met and stuff. So it might be an interesting read, Ross, and some yeah. of you really like. Yeah, I mean, like, the reason I'm so intrigued is because I'm pretty sure, like, yourselves, like, we always grew up thinking that, that you know, Obi-Wan Kenobi was um, the last of the Jedi, you know, and best, Luke Skywalker. Best of the, best of know, the Jedi, sorry. Was, and looks like, so, like, you know, we, we were always under the assumption that all Jedi had uh, had perished during Order 66. And even kind of during the sequel, uh, the prequels, we kind of still had that assumption that everybody had perished uh, until, obviously, Force and Leash came out, and then we realized other Jedis were still kicking about. So, obviously, mm -hmm. like, because I'm still under that, like, idea i'd like to know how he managed to escape like you know like how he managed to sort of get off like or where he was during the order 66 was he part of a of the the clone wars or was he still like in a in a sort of was he still in the jedi temple or how did he get away and i'd like to see how how his backstory is going to affect the character that we're going to witness down the line of star wars rebels and especially like the fact that like he seems to always like you know this is the first time he's had a, he's going to have like a um a, a student so it'd be quite interesting to see how his inexperience in probably in the jedi in the force arts uh, himself is going to affect on Ezra and how they're going to sort of, it's almost as if they're going to teach each other as the, the well that is that's an assumption of, you know, are you saying canon ain't a badass and that um and no 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 it's more the fact that like it's, <laughs> the, 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 this is what I love about him is the fact that like you know the, there's it's that unknown. there's that like inexperience mixed yeah. with maturity you know he knows how to handle himself obviously mm. but when it comes to specifically the force there's only so much like teaching that he's probably had you know so like if you think about it like uh, it's five years that's what I'm trying to think um so that's like fourteen years since Order sixty six when this show has started if my math is correct so he spent fourteen years or presumably he spent 14 years without a master so you know it, it would be like a bit like sort of like trying to learn how to ride a bike i suppose if you're not constantly practicing so yeah, how yeah. sort of like you know how, how much has he how much experience has he gained using his force powers within that 14 years and is it enough to properly teach a student like ezra and i think i think both of the characters will figure that out as the season goes on and that's something i'm quite interested in to see how how canon changes over yeah. the um, uh, over the season and whether See, or not for the good or bad. So I, yeah, I, I'm interested to read um, a new dawn because it does tell a bit of his backstory, but I don't think it's like. I don't think it goes way back to where he came from. Oh, I mean, I'm not expecting it to be revealed like immediately. You know, it's no. definitely something I'd be looking out for. Like, as oh, yeah. the, the, obviously there's a second season that's been uh, greenlit. So over probably the next season or two seasons, I'll definitely be looking forward to figuring out uh, how they deal with him and how um, how that he sort of progresses as a character. You yeah, because he he came across to me at first as the sort of um, Han Solo character, and then I realised. Ezra's actually the Han Solo character, just a lot younger. 
And what's <laughs> what's even worse is that, is that Kanan could pause could easily be uh, Kyle Katarn. They could have easily brought Kyle Katarn in and just replaced the names, and it's just annoying because Kyle Katarn is literally Han Solo mixed with a Jedi, and like that's what Kanan seems to be set up to be Han Solo with Jedi stuff. And it's like, come on, you could have just easily used that. Sorry, that was my rant at the, <laughs> at the extended universe. God damn, because Kyle Katarn's such a badass. Well, but if anyway. we're going on a rant, then it could have been a show about Darth Vader training up <laughs> Galen Maddock. And they could have had the whole Force Unleashes TV show, but we're not going to get into that but because yeah, it's out with, um, out, yeah. out with Chopper, who's literally the greatest character that's ever existed because he's such a dick. <laughs> <laughs> uh, he just literally just... <laughs> oh, I just love the fact that he just gets on Ezra's nerves all the time, and it's just absolutely hilarious. And uh, especially, like, the... Um, uh, the R two D two versus Chopper style thing that happened in um, uh, Droids in Distress in that episode it was quite interesting to see uh, sort of the two astromechs go sort of like toe to toe for a wee bit. Um, <laughs> they started and, yeah, probing each just, other. Yeah, I just I just love the fact that he he, he doesn't he, he really come like Chopper just comes across like he doesn't give a fuck. Oh. And, um, uh, but yeah. Uh, but yeah, apart from Chopper, yeah, definitely. I'm really looking forward to see how uh, Kanan or Canon or however it's yeah. uh, pronounced. Yeah, Canon. It's Canon. Is it Canon? Yeah. Uh, how how Canon <laughs> uh, progresses through the series. Very intriguing because, as I said, remember, you know, if, if he is a big Jedi, how come we haven't heard about him in episodes? Well, because they had to hide. Yeah, know. You know, but anyway, I, I mean, this is me sort of condensing. I'm, I, I keep on forgetting the galaxy is so wide that you know he probably Obi Wan Kenobi doesn't even know about everybody. Because, who's, see that? Yeah. That's Obi Wan Kenobi you know. knows about everybody. Obi Wan Kenobi knows about <laughs> everybody. He knows about Forty Two Level One. He knows about Horseplay. He knows about all the good shows. <laughs> that's, that's how Obi Wan rolls. Trust me. Obi Wan's got me in the old holocron phone, and he's t- constantly telling me. Tell that Yogi Zilla, he the shit, man. You know. <laughs> I, would, I wouldn't say holocron. I'd say hollow net. That's kind well, of... it's it's the holocron phone, Ross. I've got the newer model, so. <laughs> <laughs> um, but anyway, before we digress, we have got to talk about there was four prequels, four two-minute prequels introducing the characters, and it was entitled "The Machine and the Ghost," "Art Attack," "Entanglement," and "Property of Ezra Bridger." Now. Uh, we could cover these in li- li- literally two minutes, but Ross, why don't you? Yeah, they were good. It was it, obviously on the build up of Rebels, and I mean, this is the first sort of like Star Wars thing that we've seen since Clone Wars. It was interesting to see how uh, how it's going to play out, and I felt that these um, these shorts were um, were a good way to sort of give us a wee bit of a taster, yet still provide some. Uh, background as to how these characters are and how the characters came about, you know, sort of idea. And um, especially Chopper, this is why I fell in love with Chopper, was because uh, the, his shot was just amazing. The fact that everybody was too busy shouting at each other and he just goes away and just shoots down the TIE fighters <laughs> on his own. <laughs> it's like, yes, Chopper, fuck yeah. Um, <laughs> Uh, I really did. Lo- I-, I loved that one, and I mean, I didn't really like the art attack one with the Sabine and the um, the graffiti. It just didn't seem to resonate with me. Uh, I mean, that was the only one that I didn't really like. Uh, but then, obviously, uh, the one with the Ezra was quite funny. He kind of got an idea as to how Ezra is as a character and his sort of like you know cheeky. You know, his sort of like you know his cocky self as well, and the fact that he's taking down the tie fighter in the way and stealing the guy's helmet was quite funny. Um, but yeah, I mean, it, it was a great introduction before we got to see everything in the proper flesh. It was quite good. Yeah, I, I, I was highly impressed with. I was especially impressed with the fact that there weren't TV spots like we're so used to. They were actually self-contained shots, which was quite interesting, quite different. And I, I know with production costs, it'd be quite cool if like other TV shows did that. You know, created rather than doing a thirty-second TV spot of the episode, they actually created like a, a minute short based on one of the characters. I think it was like a very cool marketing campaign that uh, Rebels did. Now, now, see the guy that produced the third one, Entanglement, Simon Kinberg, he also did, he produced films such as Mr. and Mrs. Smith, the Sherlock Holmes film that I don't count as Sherlock Holmes with uh, Iron Man, and uh, This Means War and Elysium. So it's big yeah. producers they've got on board. And um, my favourite one, I have to say, is Property of Ezra Bad- Bridger, sorry, um, because... It kind of gave you an interest in the character because he was he was playing this uh, trooper. He, he, he met a TIE fighter trooper, a TIE pilot. 
and he took his helmet off him, and it kind of gave you a, an intro to Ezra. He collects the helmets, so I really enjoyed that, and the fact that it was the first of his energy slingshot. You know, I really like his slingshot. Um, but yeah, they, they were all really good, but you can get them in the Disney XD channel if you've missed them. Um, if you go to Disney XD or Disney.com or .co.uk, they're on their video section. They're about two minutes long, and Art Attack was okay. It just showed you that Sabine loves spray painting. Um, the Machine and the Ghost was the one that probably interested Ross the most because it was a bit canon and Hera and Chopper. Uh, <laughs> which I, I kind of get from both of you guys, Yogi and uh, Ross, that you you you're kind of chopper fans. Yeah, it that seems the way <laughs> it seems the way this is going. So we've got the droids and the dudes. So if you want to dro- join the droids team, you know, with Ross and Yogi. If you want to join join the dudes team, well, you're not with me actually because I don't like them. <laughs> All right. Well, my my runner up would have been uh, what's the uh, the, the Twilik chick. Uh, Hera. Oh, Hera, Hera. You like Hera? Yeah, yeah, yeah like, she's cool. just just because I like tentacle. Uh, no, 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 I'm, I'm not gonna fuse that thought. <laughs> <laughs> no, no hentai, no hentai, no hentai, no hentai. <laughs> I don't know why. Every time I see the you know the the, the Twilix, I always feel like you know, especially ever since that scene with uh, uh, no Java the Java the Hut, <laughs> uh, you know the the, the little slave uh, Twilix women. Yeah. You know, I always feel yeah. like I just want to snuggle up on a tentacle, like. Ah! Ah, oh, pretty bird, pretty bird. <laughs> so, Yogi Zella is actually he, <laughs> Yogi's actually a descendant of Jabba. You know, he's one of the hot clan. Oh, uh, yeah, I'm not completely there yet, but I have a bit of a championship belt. Oh, pod racing? Was it pod racing? <laughs> <laughs> We got people yeah. in the chat going TMI, Yogi. TMI. <laughs> Listen, I just I just said what everybody was thinking. Is listening in? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Exactly, yeah. <laughs> and I'll say her name quickly before Yogi and uh, Ross go hot on us. <laughs> uh, Sabine is my most interesting character. But anyway, um, we've got to talk some schematics before we get into the actual discussion of Spark of Rebellion, Ross. Tell us a wee bit about this interesting fact that they're actually doing a redo or a special edition. Of- yes, uh, Spark of Rebellion, obviously everybody would have seen it by now if you're listening to this in, in Star Wars. It was obviously the 40-minute extended um, episode. Uh, I don't believe it's episode. Well, it's a mini-movie. Um, however, they've decided to re-release Sparks of Rebellion, um, the first episode, uh, on the 26th of October, with the additional scene of Darth Vader is being thrown into it. So, um, I'd be quite intrigued. I've heard that the right at the end of episode one, where um, the the guy the the guy with the greatest sideburns have, has ever existed, <laughs> the best chops ever, uh, is speaking to the Inquisitor. It's, I think it's around that scene that you're then going to see the Inquisitor speak to Darth Vader, and um, it might give people a wee bit more of an idea. I think the reason they've added it in is people were quite perplexed as to who the Inquisitor was and why he was there. So I think having Darth Vader involved in this scene probably uh-huh. gives them an idea as to, like, I think the whole idea of the creators had... The, the idea the creators had for the Inquisitor was the fact that he was like Darth Vader's attack dog in the sense that Darth Vader can't be at every single place in the galaxy at every single time. So he yeah. has these dark Jedis that go out and do his dirty work for him, which the Inquisitor yeah. is one of them. So hopefully, I think they're hoping that this added scene um, will sort of expand on that. And obviously, Disney trying to make more money, it makes sense re-releasing it with the added scene in it as well. But it'll be interesting to see if we get more of Darth Vader, because I think James Earl Jones has done has, has signed up to voice a couple of episodes. So it'll be interesting to see how much Darth Vader gets played into it, or if he's just going to be a bit... Or maybe he could be a bit like, you know how in the original trilogy we didn't see a lot of Emperor Palpatine? You know, he was always up of every course. so often. Maybe Darth Vader's going to be that idea in Rebels, I, where we'll just I, see him the odd type. I don't know. I'll pass it over to Yogi after this, Ross, but I really hope this doesn't, even though I love Obi-Wan and I like the Holocron reference, I really hope it does its own thing rather than folds into 
the old trilogy to rely on fans. I really hope it does its own thing and builds on that. And um, I mean, you can't deny the the pilot drew more viewers than the Flash, which was CW's biggest pilot ever. And uh, the, the 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 pilot of this drew six point five million. Um, and I mean. I just, I just, I, I, it's fresh, it's new, it's, I like the ties in, but like, see how C3P and RTDT were in one episode, I hope that's what it sticks at, and I hope Obi-Wan meets them at some point, I really do hope they go to Tatooine, and they do meet up with the Hermit Obi-Wan, which I'm expecting a rather expensive statue for, <laughs> um, uh, from Sideshow Collectibles, I don't know if any listeners know about this one, it's, uh, they've made a statue, Okay, and Obi Wan's my favorite character of everything, everything. Think of think think of something. Okay, that's my favorite character, Obi Wan Kenobi. Okay, so <laughs> <laughs> uh, th- this this figurine come. Well, it's a fig- It's a statue. It's about two. F- it's <laughs> it's more than I should have spent on it last year, but I paid it in full, and uh, it's coming in November. And this comes with an interchangeable head, Ross and Yogi. And uh, it's half Alec McGuinness and half Hugh McGregor. And it, it looks really cool. And on his back, he's got, like, Clone Wars, uh, Clone War armor. It's got Anakin's lightsaber. It's got bits and pieces from the Clone Wars on him. I will need to pop a picture on our Twitter, which is at RebelsCastUK. And, uh, oh, it's uh, Obi-Wan Kenobi. But anyway, back to Star Wars just now. I hope they stay away from that and do their own thing as much as possible because that's what makes Star Wars for me. It's the unknown, the what's going to happen. Like, I am your father. I don't want any reveals like that. I want surprises. I want things I didn't know about the Force. And Yogi, what what what, what do you hope from this series? What, what would you like to see? Well, I, I just wanted to say real quick, uh, you mentioned how the pilot for this uh, did better than... Uh, the Flash premiere. Yeah, yeah. That should be no surprise, considering that the only reason uh, the Flash is doing well is because it, it it's benefiting from the Arrow. Uh, that show's good. The ooh, Flash ooh, is good. Ooh, that's a discussion for another time, you <laughs> Yeah, but you know, I'm just saying. All right, I won't go there. <laughs> <laughs> I just had to bust the chops. No, but you know, the the. I, I, I'm digging the show, uh, and now that you just told me the extended cut of Spark of Rebellion, you know, I got to check that out, and uh, I, I, I wasn't even aware of the shorts. I mean, I knew about them, but I didn't know where, where to get them, so I was like, uh, so much stuff already. It's it's exciting, and I agree. They, they need to do new stuff. Uh, it's good to have the fanfare, but, you know, having new characters, you know, and and, and, and explaining more backstories. Because, you know, it always boggles my mind. Like, really, those the, the, no, there's only a, a handful of Jedis that survive. I really find that hard to believe. Like, Luke Skywalker is the last of them, you know, and then Obi one and, you know. Come on, really, they're pretty badass. You're telling me some of them didn't exist somewhere else. They're like, hiding yeah. waiting for the perfect time. It's kind of hard to believe, you know. Yeah, and it's it's funny you should bring that up. And, again, I, 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 over the course of our um, of Rebels Cash UK, I will constantly refer to this because I think it's a perfect sort of like way but you know being the, the GM for Edge of the Empire that's when I realized how vast the galaxy actually is you know we were so used to just seeing a small a small snippet of the galaxy via Clone Wars and the, the, the two trilogies and now Rebels is opening this up and as you said you know it's now realizing hang on a minute there could be thousands I mean if you think about how big our solar system is then yeah. times that by a million which is the size of like the Star Wars galaxy of yeah. course of course there's going to be a other stuff going on. of loads yeah. you know and it's like but then it's just funny that the fact that we're it's like this is the first time that we're really getting to to sort of experience that ex- expanded universe um, from the point of view in Rebels, uh, you know, because we're just so used to just following the key players that uh, now it's kind of like Rebels, like showing all these different planets, these different characters. It's kind of now making the whole like original trilogy. Not, I'm, I'm not saying it's a bad way. Kind of, kind of making it going. My God, it doesn't focus around Han Solo and Lee all the, like you know Han Solo and Luke Skywalker all the time. Like going, these selfish pricks. There's other people in the galaxy. What even? <laughs> But um, but yeah, I mean it's it's brilliant. I, I'm totally uh, in agreement with you, uh, Yogi, about the fact that you know there's bound to be other 
Jedi's out there, and it'll be interesting if that's what gets explored in Rebels, whether or not they do bump into other Jedi's uh, along their sort of adventures. Very quite uh, interesting. Yeah, and this um, is such a tremendous opportunity for them to visit some of those fringe planets, those those hidden places that you know the Empire doesn't know about or doesn't know about them yet. You know, and stuff like that. I, uh, I mean, it'd be great for them to visit familiar locales like Tatooine, but. Um, you know, let, let's let's have some new places. Why not? Like the the galaxy is vast. Yeah, or even like getting to see places that um, uh, that that have only been mentioned verbally, like through the sort of like Clone Wars and um, the other trilogies. You know, for example, like Kessel. For example, like we all knew about the Kessel Run, but we didn't know where Kessel was, what Kessel is. You know, and then finally, uh, in the first episode, we finally get to see what Kessel looks like and, you know, why it's utilized the way it's utilized. And, you know, it's, it's yeah, and as you said, it's great to sort of finally see different uh, uh, planets. And th- there was a case where I was a wee bit scared before I watched it going, oh, don't tell me Ezra's from Tatooine. You know, everyone comes from Tatooine. But in, no, no, in fact, he's from, I think it's Lorthal or Lorthal, I think it's called, the planet he is. And again, as you said, it's nice to see different aspects of planetary life and different planets you know like we finally saw roads for the first time in start in the star wars universe in episode uh in episode two i think it is uh two or three when uh they're getting chased by the tie fighters you see the big highway that they're like sort of like riding their speeder bikes down it's like oh my god i don't think i've ever (laughs) seen a road yet in star wars it's like shit that's what they look like you know and it's great for them and i think rebels now has the opportunity as you said to explore those like unknown sections of the um uh of of the universe and uh, i suppose it's a great way to sort of roll into our first sort of discussion on episode one which is obviously sparks of rebellion um a big 40 minute long mini movie type thing um and um yeah it kind of just we, we get used to the characters we get to see what's going on about them and um obviously yourself you just sort of like a recently jumped onto the Rebels bandwagon type thing. What did you think of uh, the first episode? Oh, I loved it. I, I got sucked in right away. Uh, and now I'm going to try to track down uh, as many different versions of everything in the shorts. And I, I just realized that there's a, there's a DVD set in uh, Walmart. This is an exclusive set, so, uh, according to them, at least. Mm-hmm. That only they have it. You can get a 3D model kit of the ghost ship um, a, a trailer of, of the entire season one, and all the shorts plus the extended version of uh, Sparks of uh, Spark of, Rebe- of Rebellion. So that's pretty awesome. I might have to get that yeah. now <laughs> because yeah, it's turning me to a fanboy. <laughs> yeah, definitely. And I, it seems like they might be going down the route like the the same sort of structure as Clone Wars went down in the sense that um, uh, you know that way where uh, uh, you had the Clone Wars movie first before it jumped into the TV show. It feels like maybe this yeah. first episode was their sort of idea. Maybe not as sort of um, uh, as stark as uh, the Clone Wars did it. But yeah, especially the, the fact that they've come out with a Sparks of Rebellion DVD, you know, it really does make sense. Um, but it was a brilliant like show and it had it had everything you wanted to have in, uh, in a Star Wars um uh, you know, in 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 a Star Wars episode, in the sense that you know you managed to, you know, you 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 felt you you got the feeling of Star Wars. I was like immediately transported back to when I was like a young kid watching A New Hope for the first time, seeing these characters for the first time, going through sort of similar scenarios and similar situations, being on the the uh, you know be, being on the ship, being off the planet, you know, rescuing people. It was everything. It was anything a Star Wars fan wanted was like piled into that uh, rebellion and it was done it, it was done well it wasn't thrust into your face like certain certain superhero shows aka Gotham it's not like thrust into you like that <laughs> uh, whereas you know rebellion it felt right and it felt proper as to how it, they handled you know the, the very essence that Star Wars is yeah and I think it's important for the pacing in this in this series already is right where it needs to be. It's fast enough that you, you're getting interested, but not so fast that you feel like there's no room for them to go with the story. Whereas uh, you, you compared it to Gotham, it's a good comparison. Gotham is not subtle at all, and they're trying to like squeeze as much as they can in there. And sometimes by doing that, you detract from the characters. Here, 
we have the characters front and center, and there's they're showing other things, but we're still focused around that that ragtag group of rebels, and it, it's really yeah. cool because I I actually feel fully invested in each of these characters. Yeah, it's almost like in every episode so far, we get like some meaningful downtime with the characters when they're on their ship, which gives you that chance to sort of like take a break from the action, get an idea as to how the characters are feeling and what the characters are wanting to do that for that specific episode. And then all of a sudden you're like, right, you got your chance for a break. Now we're back into the entire show. And it's a shame that a lot of shows fail in that, in that you know, respect in terms of trying to, you know, throw things at you too far. And, uh, yeah, so, Ali, what did you think of episode one? Uh, well, I will tell you, from the start, I doubted this CGI animation. Um, I watched Clone Wars. Disney, no matter what they've done, it kind of... <sighs> you know that way when you know Disney from when you're from the 80s, like us, Ross, and it's like, I know what you might do to this. And I was severely worried, Ross, that this would be too child orientated. Yeah. You know, and I, I thought they were gonna water it down, water it down. They've Disneyfied it. I'm not gonna deny it. Mm-hmm. Yeah, However Yeah, I see it has been Disneyfied, but not in a not, not in a way. negative not way. In a negative it's way more like whatsoever. an understandable way. Like it's, it's more than yeah, yeah, yeah. Your animators do that sort of stuff. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So for the first time ever, I'm going to announce I love this show. <laughs> I cannot. Is <laughs> I I I genuinely do not like things. I <laughs> and Clone Wars bored me towards the end. It, in fact, the <laughs> tired of Clone Wars, even Darth Maul bored me. <laughs> I'm not gonna lie. Like, watch episode, watch season one and two. Try and sit down tomorrow, Ross, and Saturday, and watch season one and two of Clone Wars, and go, oh, that was really good. You can't. You uh, can't. I despised the first, uh, the first half of uh, yeah. season one of Clone Wars. I couldn't. It's get into so it dull, and it's so misrepresented because it was broadcast in different ways, and different episodes were mucked up. And I've got the proper Clone Wars order as by the Star Wars, and even watching it in the correct order, the film was boring. I remember renting that film <clears throat> from Sky. It must have been about five years ago when was the clone wars movie out ross you google that while i chat uh, 2008 i believe okay so that was 97 years ago six years six years ago i was uh, home from working a split shift and it was on sky and it was like rent it now buy it now whatever and i rented it and i sat and watched it and i fell asleep for the first time in any star wars thing ever I love the fucking holiday caravan of Christmas or whatever it was called. I watched the Ewoks when I was younger. I saved up my Dairy Cheese Duncan, not Duncans, they weren't out then. Dairy Cheese round things and sent oh, them the off. the triangles. No, yep. Or the, yeah. Yep, the triangles, Ross. Sent away three, or three of them to get a VCR of the We Are The Ewoks. You know the cartoon with Wicket? I don't know if you do, but anyway, some listener will. Um... I loved the Wicked cartoon, the Ewoks, and uh, Clone Wars. I love Obi Wan Kenobi, and God rest his soul. But I, 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 I just couldn't get into Clone Wars. I appreciate of Anakin. I do like Anakin. He's badass. I did have the Clone Wars game for the PS3, but the Clone Wars TV series. It was just like, are you kidding me? There's droids everywhere. We get it. Why don't you just make water damage happen? <laughs> or install them with the Windows XP and the problem's gone. <laughs> you know? I so, their voices were so annoying as well. Oh, yeah. yeah. Roger, Roger. Okay. Yeah. Uh, you're coming with the... Uh, you're under arrest. You know, it's like... Ugh. <laughs> For a, uh, they should have got rid of them because it's like where are the the questions are now as the universe is going to continue because obviously George Lucas after the three didn't know how far it well, he did to some extent he didn't know he was going to make prequels he didn't know this he should have explained where the droids went where did those droids go that's what I want to know that's my un, un, unanswered question of the universe never mind what Darth Maul done never mind if Qui Gon died or not he died he died okay get over it the droids 
what happened to all the droids in episode four? Well, from what I've um, uh, from what I've managed to sort of piece together from various sources, uh, I believe the droids um, originally they were programmed via the main sort of, of course, uh, yeah. ship, right? But then uh, because they realised in episode one that getting blown up and it deactivates all the droids, decided to have their own internal thing. And I believe what it was was basically just like when they pretty much announced that they'd won, uh, they shut the forced the um, the so, separatists to pretty much just shut down f- all the droids. And... How come they fought droids all through the Clone Wars? And that. Uh, mm-hmm. Oh, are you meaning like? Are you meaning like? I'm, I mean, when... the droids. The Clone Wars is after Episode Two. Yeah. Okay. So, what happened to all the droids in Episode Four? Yeah. That's my question, Ross. That goes back to what I was saying. The the way that they bridge yeah. the gap between the original trilogy and the new one. It's very lousy because it feels like, how did we get here? <laughs> how, mm-hmm. how much time mm-hmm. has progressed? I mean, uh, unless you keep up with all yeah. the back, the stuff that comes outside of the films, you're in the dark. It, it is a, as yeah. a writer, that's bad. It's bad storytelling. Yeah, yeah. Of course it is. Uh, I, that's what I mean, Ross. I understand what you're saying. That was based in episode one. And I understand they blew up the droid control ship. That was for Naboo. That wasn't for the the galaxy. So I don't know, but what I was saying is, you know, no, 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 they... no. Listen, listen. They were fighting the, you know, the Clone Wars TV series. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right, that lasted up to episode three, apparently. Um. Yeah. Well, it last. Yeah, pretty much. Just well, before it, right? So, nah, where before. did the droids go to? Between maybe Rebels will explain it, but that's what I want to know. Well, that's, that's what I was trying to explain to you. There was the fact that, like, um, from again bringing up Yogi's point there, you know, uh. You know, you, the the general Star Wars fans shouldn't have to do the digging that I did to they try should. and figure out like what's I've going got, on. I've got the Star you Wars know? encyclopedia. I've got the A to Z, the new one, and I've also <laughs> got the Old Republic encyclopedia. But um, from what I've dug up <laughs> is, but what from, from from what I've dug up is the fact that like you know they were um systematically deactivated by the separatists on the condition of their surrender, and then they pretty much just went round all the main factories and worlds and destroyed them all, and uh, pretty much those battle droids are completely and utterly like illegal throughout the galaxy. Um, the uh, the G- Genosians um yep. do tend to sort of like create the odd battle droid to try and sell off to make some money for the planet like on the black market oh, and no, sub that, but w- there, but, there was millions of them but yeah but, they? They, but Ross, the where are they Ross where are they <laughs> they've been destroyed Ross, melted down are, no, turned into no. blasters who melted them who, who melted them then uh, the, 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 the workforce <laughs> like you know liberating planets and you know like taking <laughs> in their workforce no, and farmers into just smelting no. the, uh, the, the droids you no. know no. Not buying it. What Not the buying planet? it, aye. What is the planet <laughs> like, called? <laughs> most, no, it doesn't need to be one planet. It could be no. any planet that they're well, on. Name they it. Just think, Which one? I don't know. Like, this is the, the planet Ooga Booga, <laughs> right? You know? So- like, <laughs> Lizard people are kicking about, <laughs> and they're all just farmers. And then battle droids are kicking about, and then the Empire are like, "Oh, you know what? We're going to put you in slave camps to, to, yeah. <laughs> to the droids, sort of, you the, know, the, melt the, them down." The droids in slave camps. <laughs> no, they put the the farmers in slave camps to, right, uh, to melt them force down. them. Yeah, to melt the droids down. Yeah. Right. So how do you get? How did they get the droids to go there if they're main battleships? No, because they've <laughs> they've uh, they've been deactivated the droids, or if they're not Who been deactivated. deactivated them? Uh, the the separatists on the condition <laughs> of the surrender. <laughs> yeah, see, I would have more easily believed if the they were if maybe. Uh, I mean, it's so confusing too because I mean that the old republic becomes the rebels and then the em- the empire is, becomes evil and you know if you're not really in the lore of Star Wars and you just you enjoy it but you don't get that deep into it you're like the hell is going on it's like musical chairs on crack i mean you know <laughs> See, but I, just, I get deep into it and i'm still wanting to know the name of this planet ross that the droids <laughs> <are melting. laughs> well would it be but would it have been better if like the rebels ended up like repurposing the the droids and you know, then it would be better if they actually showed like in episode two even that all battle droids were sent to no episode sorry episode three the, um, where Anakin lost his legs, I can't remember the name. No. Oh. Mustafar. Mustafar, right? 